What is up YouTube? Welcome back to yet another video. Hope you guys are all doing well. So for the past couple of months, all we've been hearing is everyone praising the new Canon EOS R5. And can you really blame them? 8K raw video recording with 4K and 120 frames per second. Something you see on cameras that cost anywhere from 50 to $100,000. And Canon has somehow fit that into a full frame mirrorless camera that's gonna cost less than five grand. Now will that camera overheat or will the batteries die fast? We don't know yet. What I do know is that Sony just registered a brand new camera and a full frame lens that is scheduled to be announced sometime in June. So that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. But before we get started, if you guys are new to the channel, please make sure you guys subscribe. And only if you guys end up liking this video, please make sure you guys go ahead and destroy that like button for me. So the first camera I ever bought and used on the channel here was the Sony a7S II, which in my opinion is still the best low light camera on the planet for video in its price range. I bought it with the Zeiss 16 to 35 millimeter lens as my first lens to use with the camera. And aside from the battery life, I still love this camera. As time passed, you guys saw Panasonic drop a dope camera, and then Canon came out with the EOS R5, which raised the bar even higher, which is scheduled to release here in the next couple of months. Me being the Sony fanboy that I am, here I am waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm like, when are they gonna drop this Sony a7S III? It's been years at this point, and a lot of us have given up hope, until this happened. A few days ago, Sony registered a new camera code in China, WW271448 which turns out to be a new high-end e-mount full-frame camera. Guys, let's be realistic here. I have no idea what that code stands for or what it depicts. All I know is that that code that was registered to that camera has five gigahertz Wi-Fi built right into the camera, which will be a direct competitor for the Canon EOS R5. However, what we don't know is if that new camera is gonna be the Sony a7S III, which I hope to God it is, or if we're gonna see the Sony a7 IV get debuted. You guys over at Sony, you can't just be on top for all those years and then let Canon come in and flex on you guys like this with the EOS R5. It doesn't work like that. You guys need to bring some heat like fast, and I mean like yesterday fast. Sony is also gonna debut a new lens next month, which I have a strong feeling it's gonna be the 12 to 24 millimeter f 2.8 Sony G Master lens. You guys over at Sony already released the 24 millimeter f 1.4 G Master lens earlier this year, followed up by the 20 millimeter f 1.8 Sony G lens. So it only makes sense for you guys to release the 12 to 24 millimeter f 2.8 G Master lens. Maybe it'll have a lower aperture, I'm not sure, but let's start with f 2.8 for now. Which by the way guys, if you guys do wanna check out the comparison between the 24 millimeter f 1.4 G Master lens and the 20 millimeter f 1.8 Sony G lens, I will leave that linked down below in the description for you guys, because I did review both of those lenses here recently on the channel. I did a full comparison between the two lenses and I also reviewed the 24 millimeter f 1.4 G Master lens on its own. If Sony does go ahead and drop the Sony a7 IV, I would like to see at least 6K in 30 frames a second and 4K in 120 frames a second with 10 bit, not 8 bit, 10 bit this time around. However, personally, I feel like deep down, Sony knows they gotta come back with some heat because they know if they drop some half camera next month, it's not gonna fly well for us Sony users. They feel the pressure from Canon, and that's what happens when you stop being proactive in certain areas of the lineup. Really, what we all wanna see is the Sony a7S III in 8K with in-body image stabilization, a dual UHS-2 card slot with a flip-up screen, and a 10-bit flexing at least a 42 megapixel camera. Now, for Sony to drop an 8K camera, even if it's in 30 frames per second, I feel like personally, they're gonna have to either steal the 42 megapixel sensor off the a7R 3 or even maybe steal the sensor off the a7R 4 which I don't know how they're gonna do it, but guys, you guys have to figure this out because I feel like behind the scenes, you guys have been really putting in some effort. Otherwise, this guy and a lot of other people are gonna switch over and pick up a Canon EOS R5. I mean, it's, there, there's no excuse at this point. There's been so many years uh, that have passed that Sony had time to work on the a7S III, or even if it wasn't the a7S III and it's the a7 IV, that's completely fine too, as long as they did something uh, in the past couple of years to keep up with what Canon is doing right now, which is absolutely insane. I'm curious, guys, what do you guys want to see Sony drop? Do you guys want to see the a7S III, which I'm assuming a ton of you guys are, I'd say about 80% of you are hoping that the a7S III drops, but would you guys like to see the a7 IV instead? And would you guys be mad if they dropped the a7IV instead of the a7S III? Also, what lens do you think they're gonna drop? Me personally, I have a good feeling that it's gonna be the 12 to 24 millimeter 
2.8 G Master lens. It only makes sense that they drop a new G Master wide angle lens like that. Based on the lenses that they already have out in the lineup right now and the lenses they recently dropped, it only feels like they're going to something that's going to be a much more wide angle lens. And I feel like 12 to 24 millimeters is going to be perfect, especially for you vloggers out there that are looking for a new wide angle G Master lens. That's going to wrap it up, guys, for this video. If you guys did end up liking this video, please make sure you guys destroy that like button for me. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.